Joining us is Jordan Belford. His story inspired the hit film, The Wolf of Wall Street, and he's about to begin his Canadian tour in May. He joins me on the line now from L.A. Jordan, good to have you with us. Thank you. My pleasure. So, Jordan, before we get your thoughts on the markets and, of course, gold, you'll be starting a tour next month across Canada. What will be your message? The cornerstone of what I teach people is this idea that, you know, success and integrity and ethics are not mutually exclusive. And in fact, that success in the absence of, egg, of ethics and integrity is really failure. So the idea is to teach people, you know, the, the, the skill sets, both in the inner game of success, meaning what happens in your head before you go out into the world and take action, and then teaching the, the skill sets for the outer game of success, meaning entrepreneurship skills, sales skills. Now, Jordan, we all know Scorsese paid you the biggest compliment of all by putting your life on the big screen and highlighting the rise and fall of your career on Wall Street during the 80s and 90s. What do you think is the biggest change in market philosophy that you've seen since your days on Wall Street. We recently saw the success of the book Flash Boys, which talks about market manipulation. What do you think are some of the biggest changes you've seen? Well, clearly the internet. I mean, you know, I was in a pre-internet era, believe it or not. I know it sounds insane, but I, there was no internet. In fact, when I started, I didn't even have email. I have a cell phone. And so in terms of, of the market, I think the biggest fundamental change, and what, of course, as you mentioned, is high-frequency trading. But that stuff actually was going on anyway. It was in, in a different model. The bigger change is in the way news is now disseminated. So I think that's been a major fundamental shift. And then also we saw in 2007, you know, the, the, the really the runaway train of derivatives, that along with the compensation structures on Wall Street that were – incentivizing people and rewarding people for making money in the near term. So what some of the bigger firms like Goldman's doing, it's very smart and it's very ethical, is they've actually held, they're holding back commissions now. And that's a fundamental shift that definitely will have an impact. So is there still an opportunity to have a wolf of Wall Street today or do regulations prevent this now? The answer I think is yes, there's always going to be some people that go to Wall Street either with bad intentions or lose their way. That being said, there are checks and balances that have been put in place somewhat and that more should be done putting them in place that will sort of minimize or compartmentalize the damage. Because again, the problem is, is, is in these financial instruments of mass destruction, as Warren Buffett terms them, and that has been somewhat corrected. So I think that things have gotten better, but there's always going to be that possibility. So, Jordan, in the movie, there's the famous scene now where we see Leonardo DiCaprio, who plays you, asking someone to sell him this pen. And that's basically how you are recruiting the next star. So what do you look for in a salesperson? What are some of the qualities that you really need to make it? Well, my preference is I like to train salespeople from scratch rather than hiring successful salespeople and trying to adopt them into my culture. Okay, and the reason for that is when you go out and take an expert salesperson or a very good one and then try to make it even better, he's a hired gun and it's very hard to build loyalty. So what I look for mostly is, is desire. Second is ethics. I want to, you know, because that's me, because I am so, I'm more sensitive to the ethics than anybody out there. And when you come here and we speak, you'll see I talk about ethics ad nauseum. And also, there's a certain type of person that's a little more of an extrovert and that enjoys interaction and contact. You want a happy sales force, so I try to find people a little bit more extroverted so that when they become successful, it's sustainable versus they become rich and miserable. So that's really the things I look for. So, Jordan, as you know, Kiko News tends to focus on commodities with an emphasis on gold. Do you like gold? Yeah. I mean, listen, I've owned some gold mines. And, uh, and um, I, I, I did, you know, listen, unfortunately, timing is everything. And, and um, I was buying them when gold was, you know, everyone thought it was going to 5000 And then it reversed itself. So I, I was doing some stuff in South Africa and it fell through. I think, listen, I think gold is a great investment in terms of as part of a, a balanced portfolio. Um, it's, you know, and, and, you know, interestingly enough, it's not as much of a hedge against inflation as it used to be. You know, gold, you know, does it, it's interesting, you know, when, when the, it used to be that, you know, bad news would happen and the gold would rise, you know, and that's they're not linked as much anymore. So I think, again, I'm not going to say on the air whether it's going up or down because I don't know. I'm not pretending to say no where the direction of gold is. But what I do think it is, it's, it certainly should be part of a balanced portfolio, 
you know, and again, timing's everything. So when you buy, obviously you want to buy at the right time. So Jordan, if I were to give you $100,000 today, how would you invest it? Okay, I would take $100,000 and I would, I would not go and buy stocks. I would, I would buy companies. I would go and try to find, I would go in, and into um, um, all the, 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 the entrepreneurial firms, the venture capital guys, and I'd look for deals that were about to go public, early stage deals, and I would invest my company in pro- privately, not publicly, because I enjoy that much more, and, and, and taking the 100 grand, locking it, I, I don't care that it's not going to be liquid for a couple of years, I'd lock it up and, and try to get in some really great growth companies and, and wait the three to five years till it goes public and then make 100 times my money and also lose sometimes. If I was going to this exchange, let's say now if I was going to go to the exchange and not do venture capital, I probably, I, I, at this point, I, listen, I would do some stuff with commodities because commodities are in the toilet bowl right now. You know, there's been, a, you know, there's, the super cycle is over, so to speak. So I would look for a lot of fallen angels out there where they have great fundamentals, but the stocks are trading far below them. There are companies out there in, in, the, in the mining sector, the resource sector, that are trading below the amount of cash they have in the bank because nobody cares. So I'd look for some of those. And of course, I'd balance that with some really blue chip companies that also paid some dividends. So I'd have some, a little bit of income there but you know for me again i'm not your average investor i'm not looking to retire on dividends jordan before i let you go i love the movie is there anything you would have changed yeah i mean i I, I certainly wouldn't have you know there was some fictionalized stuff there like i i punched my wife in the stomach at the end that was pure fiction uh, in terms of the business stuff, yeah, I mean, like, you know, there was just some major um, points that just weren't true. And, but again, I understand why Marty did it. Um, like, for instance, they make it like the companies were dog shit. That's just not true. You know, the companies were small uh, venture capital type companies. Some did really, really well. Some didn't. But the crime I committed was stock manipulation. But try to explain that to an audience in a movie in three hours, and they're going to fall asleep. It's much easier to, you know, you know, make a joke about the company suck and then show a shack in the middle of nowhere as I'm pitching a company. So I get it. Like, I get why he did it. I have no problems with it. There's one thing I do have a, a problem with in terms of the business stuff, is, is, and this is a lesson for people who are going out into the workplace, is that – they had me going into this office that when I go to that petty stock firm and I, you know, see how much, you know, the commissions are. I look at the guy and say, is this legal? And he says to me, well, yeah, kind of, sort of. Remember that scene? Of course. The truth is, when I asked that question, the guy said to me, of course it's legal. Look, we have a SEC on the wall. And he has two members. Of course. Now, here's the point. If they would have said to me, ah, kind of, sort of, I would have run out. Jordan, we have one minute left. Where do you see yourself in five years? My, my guess is like, you know, listen, my business, thankfully, is going really well. Um, and it's a lot of hard work because I'm, you know, looping the world and giving these seminars. Um, I do a lot of charity work in Africa and Australia, and also I'm rolling that out into the United States. And hopefully I'll, I'll find, you know, I have some good friends in Canada, and I'll be doing that too in Canada. So hopefully uh, my goal is to really have most of my work speaking. I love to speak, as you could probably guess at this point, right? I don't shut up. Is, um, is you know, I want to do more of the stuff for the charities and less because I need to make money. But obviously, as a business person, you know, I have a goal in mind and a vision for the future about building a big company and, and sort of, you know, uh, using the platform of the movie because it's, you know, there's so many, you know, tens of millions of people who love it around the world is to try to create a, an environment, a culture, you know, online, you know, that's really binds young entrepreneurs and older entrepreneurs as well. And, you know, is about, you know, really doing it the right way, becoming successful, making a lot of money, but not not sacrificing your ethics and integrity. And if I could do that over the next five or 10 years, I think it's going to be the greatest legacy of all. All right, Jordan, that's all the time we have today. But if you want to hear more from Jordan, you can catch him in his Canadian tour, which is about to kick off in May. You can get more information at the link below. Thanks so much for being with us, Jordan. No problem. Take care. And thanks for watching this edition of On The Spot. If you have any comments or questions, you can email us at newsfeedback at kitco.com. Have a good week.